welcome back. This is your man Warrior, and this is BMAC. BMAC is one of my patrons. This is another patron roster review. Um, he's okay with making it public. And a shout out to his team, Power Unleashed. What's happening, Power Unleashed? Now, he is doing decent. He is not completely free to play, and he is not a whale. He is a bit of a dolphin. He spends just a little bit each month, not a whole lot, maybe five bucks a week, if that, um, just to try to give himself a little bit of a competitive edge. <clears throat> I know a lot of people that do that. So he, he, he is in the top 100, which is phenomenal. He's actually trying to break the top 50 and he needs some help. I'm going to give him some suggestions. I hope these suggestions help him get there. As far as his stats overall, he's looking really good. Um, you know, as far as where he's at with his guild, it looks like he's winning enough currency through the raids they're doing. And he is a giver. He's over a thousand for the, the gear exchange donations. So that looks phenomenal. So as far as his arena squad, the first impression I get is he's trying to use a bit of the old meta with Boba Fett to try and help out. And this is not a bad team. This actually could be a top 50 team if, if his Stormtrooper Han was like gear 11 and at over 200 speed. Unfortunately, his Stormtrooper Han is not gear 11, he's gear 9, and his speed is less than desirable at 157. Because of that, and that's what this team hinges on, even with the Lando lead to give you additional speed, you will probably never quite be able to break that top 100 and stay there, and you'll probably start to see more Empire and more Sith teams popping up and pushing you down further and further. So I've got a bunch of suggestions for you. I'm excited. I think that even with the existing team you have, there's a lot you can do with it. So the first thing I would do is I would move Boba Fett into the leadership role. Boba Fett just makes your team hit ridiculously okay they're going to get lots of critical chance tons of critical damage um, and i would continue to develop him finish him off and get boba fett as your leader the second thing is you have emperor palpatine so i would actually put emperor palpatine in there for the shocks and stuff um, the stuns the stuns and shocks are phenomenal um, and so emperor palpatine can really help you if you're still seeing a lot of other rebels kind of floating around by you and even for um, any of those teams where you just want to prevent the healing and stuff emperor palpatine and stuns will give you a whole nother round or of turns. Now your bigs and wedge are some of your strongest characters you have, so I would continue for now anyway to keep them on the team. They're big assets and they work really well together, plus under Boba lead, they're both gonna just hit for a ridiculous amount. And you don't have to have wedge as the leader for him and bigs to get some of their synergistic abilities. Now the last person I would you know, switch out and stuff and, and, and fix is, so I'm asking you to take out Lando and, and Stormtrooper Han and replace it with Emperor Palpatine and Shore Trooper. So that's going to be, Shore Trooper is going to be the, the uh, project of the month. It would be the singular character I would hyper focus on until he's where you need him, but I would put him in there and this is why he's an auto taunt. So there's two kinds of theories with these teams. One is be the fastest and you're, you're not going to get there. So you've got to switch to the other strategy, which is be durable and then take them out. And so an auto taunter like Shore Trooper, even if he dies, is going to absorb all of the attacks from the other team and give you that freedom to keep alive your other less you know strong characters such as boba fett emperor palpatine biggs and wedge so they have time to do what it is they do so i would definitely put shore trooper in the place of stormtrooper han i would move uh boba fett up to the leadership and i would put in emperor palpatine over uh lando now that will probably drop your uh your squad power down a little bit because of the characters being under geared in comparison to who you have so maybe this this strategy is keep what you have for a couple weeks while you hyper focus on emperor palpatine and shore trooper but shore trooper should be your first priority arena is important and you do want to break that top 50 i know you do so you have been playing for about six months and your team looks pretty good for six months and like i said dolphin status giving you a little bit of a competitive edge from time to time on certain characters but as we go into your roster you're going to see um, that yeah there is a lot of opportunity with growth you don't have a whole lot of gear 9 or gear 10 or gear 11 characters and that's what happens when you have to grind it out and after six months it does look pretty dang good now we're going to go ahead and kind of go through your, your teams that I suggest and in the order that I suggest. So you're coming up, you said, onto your first Zeta ability that you're going to be able to do and you're unsure of who you want to do. 
And so I wanted to go into Sith because I noticed you're developing your Sith. Emperor Palpatine, again, I told you I want you to gear him up for your team. You have Darth Vader, Darth Sidious, and Darth Maul. And, um, and so those first four, and you also have a three-star Darth Nihilus, you could make your, your Sith viable and you could use them in Arena potentially as alts plus these characters, Darth Maul is good in ships, Darth Vader's good in raid, you know, Emperor, uh, Emperor Palpatine's good in raid and good in empire. So Sith is, would be a pretty good uh, starting point for you. And I would probably put my, my first Zeta as I look at all the Zetas I've done. I think I have five now that I've done. Uh, Darth Vader is probably the most usable. I, I can use him in Arena. I can use him in the Rancor Raid. Um, he makes a great leader. Even if I don't use him um, with his Zeta ability in Arena, um, it's just nice to have him for the Rancor and whatnot. So I'd probably put your first Zeta on Darth Vader, even if you don't use him for Arena. <clears throat> and... And I would continue to focus on the Sith, um, at minimum, Darth Maul for his ship. I'd continue to focus on Darth Vader for the raids and Emperor Palpatine for your arena team. Those would be the th three that I would focus on. But remember, Shore Trooper's priority over all of this. So you want to make sure you get your, your Shore Trooper uh, worked on and finished first because you really need him uh, highly leveled up. And then you'll, you can focus on these three Sith I'm mentioning. And then after you're done with Sith, it is really important that you go through and win the um, credit heist and whatnot. And so you have Boba Fett and Lando real high. That's good. Stormtrooper Han's pretty high. Um, but you definitely want to kind of, you know, work on IG-88. He's pretty low and not very strong. He's probably dying on your credit heists. I'm not sure if you're making it through the third round or not. But... The credits are highly important. They're very important for the droid, droid bots. Um, Chewbacca, you don't have to worry about, and the rest I would ignore. But IG-88, I would definitely put some energy into after you work on those three Sith, which is Darth Vader, um, Darth Maul, and Emperor Palpatine. And by the way, Darth Vader and, uh, and Emperor Palpatine, easy to gear. They're both really easy to gear, so that's great. IG-88 is pretty easy to gear as well. So I'm giving you some easier projects after you do Shore Trooper, which is not an easy project. Um, and then after you kind of finish off the Scoundrel team, get it high enough, just high enough, because you're kind of almost free to play. You're trying to head that direction and not really spend the, you know, five bucks a week anymore. You're trying to go free to play. Um, to do that, you're really gonna, you, you don't want to go all in like gear 11 everything. Um, um, probably gear, you know, 9 and 10 for most of these characters would be sufficient, with the exception, obviously, of Boba Fett, because I'm suggesting him as your leader for Arena. After this, I would then move like I have kind of a, I have kind of a routine of who you should and shouldn't be farming, is I would move to Rebels and I would finish them. Now, I would finish Admiral Akbar uh, because he's excellent in your ship's lineup, and it's who you're using, um, and then I would use your Biggs and Wedge, Princess Leia and Lando, those are all great, and it looks like you've got most of them high enough, but Wedge and Biggs, I would continue to gear up because you're using them still in arena and they're a great combination but continue to work on admiral akbar um, that would be really important so and then after your rebels i would then move to the empire and i would focus on your top five your literal top five or the top five i would focus on obviously short trooper by then will be done hopefully that you took my advice and your emperor palpatine will be done so really when you move to empire after your sith and scoundrels and rebels you're gonna focus on empire and finishing them off and when i say that i mean tie fighter pilot and royal guard those are the two that really need to love. I would continue to get them up. This is going to help you immensely in many areas of the game. As Empire is just like Rebels. They're great all over. They're great for mod battles to get the potency mods. Um, they're excellent in you know Cantina and Dark Side missions and Arena. I mean, Empire teams are highly competitive in Arena. So I would finish these guys off. And then lastly, I would move to Jedi. And with Jedi, you've got Qui-Gon Jinn, Jedi Knight, Anakin, and Ahsoka. So those three are awesome. Um, you use Jedi Constellar's ship, so I would continue him. All the rest I would ignore, except the fifth one, I would do Ayla Secura. You do not have her. I would highly recommend farming her. Now, this is a lower priority, so obviously you want to go through all the others, the Sith, Scoundrels, Rebels, and Empire first. When you get to Jedi, I would farm Ayla, and then I would just work on Ayla and Jedi Constellar. Those would be the two that I would add here. And then the very last thing, if you're kind of wanting, like, once you've completed all the pillars of the game, you know, your your Jedi Empire, Rebels and, you know, Scoundrels and stuff. Once you have that, you know, your droids don't look good and your 
and your um, we can go there and look but your droids don't look good and your clones don't look good so your droids are pretty messed up um, and that's that happens and then your clones are even worse um, which happens and so because you don't have clones developed at all and you don't have um, those I would develop Rex he's one of the best leaders in the game I would develop him on the side as just kind of a side background pet project what you can do do it what you can't don't worry about but I would get him up but uh, I think a really fun team you would enjoy since you're kind of doing the Sith um, and you already have a good jump start is first order so Kylo Ren is highly viable now and would be an excellent character to drop in anywhere and I don't see him in here yet so I would get Kylo Ren kind of passively on the side also you have Captain Phasma, who's the leader for uh, for that team, and you have First Order Tie Pilot, which is one of the heaviest hitters in the game. Um, he's kind of the Ray of of the dark side. So, um, I you know even those three, just those three, even, and then if you were going to ever get the ship, you might want to do First Order Stormtrooper. But for, for now, Kylo Ren, and then focus on Kylo Ren, First Order Tie Pilot, and Captain Phasma. I think those front three would make an excellent alt uh, uh, team for parts of the raid the heroic raid uh the aat also it would also help you um in arena you could drop those three in on the front three and put a couple alts in the back uh from your empire or your sith and it would just be devastating to your opponents this would be my little fun project a month or two down the road if you decided that you wanted to focus on a team but in review for your arena make sure that you mix up your your team a little bit get that shore trooper up that should be first priority um that will be how you're going to break top five 50. The good news is, is if you're taking all those speed mods off of uh, Stormtrooper Han, you can put them on Boba Fett and that will make your Boba Fett fast and he's a lot faster out the gate anyway. Um, and then that'll give you the opportunity to potentially ability block your opponents right, right away, which will help with durability as well. And then, of course, you know, go in, finish those three Sith I mentioned, your scoundrels, just get them up high enough you can max out credit heist, move to your rebels, finish them off, just the top five, go to your empire, finish those off, you'll have a few left to do, uh, the TIE Fighter pilot, whatnot, and then move to Jedi, make sure you get Ala Secure up, continue to jet, do Jedi Consular, and then, if you want, move to First Order, and then the only other side project while you're doing Shore Trooper that you could kind of work on would be Rex, I would highly recommend doing Rex. Let's go ahead and look at ships now. So for ships, you, like I, I knew, you use uh, Admiral Akbar. Admiral Akbar is a great balanced ship for people who are either very small dolphins or free to play. He's balanced on defense, he's balanced on offense, and he has the highest power overall. So he's a great ship. Plus, he's a rebel, so he's got duality in that sense. And you're using the Biggs and Wedge combo because they're two of your strongest characters and they're in your ships. That only makes sense. And you have a fleet rank of seven. That is awesome now the other thing you're doing <clears throat> is you have a, a high boba fett so you're using boba fett's ship that's great um that's that's excellent and then you've got um sunfac as your ship that you can kind of work on now um you, and that's your tank and then you've got jedi consular for durability um what i see lacking kind of um in your initial lineup is target lock your ability to, to apply target lock on the opponent and kind of get them out of there and so the, the ship that you don't have that i would highly recommend you get is darth maul's ship i would be spending half of all of your ship currency and you're good you're high you know you're you're up in arena you're getting a good number of arena fleet tokens i would be doing darth maul's ship and I would get Darth Maul's ship up, 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 up. And this is what you can do after that, is you can put him in place of Jedi Consular. Now, your, your total power will drop significantly because Jedi Consular is one of the highest power ships in the game. But don't worry about power in this game. Don't worry about the fleet power. That does not matter. Um, it would be more important to have him. And then what you would do is you would put your... Uh, Darth Maul's special ability where he stealths everybody and puts retribution on one of the tanks. I would do that with Sunfac or with Biggs. 
Um, and then the other thing you can do is you could put Sunfac in your lineup in the backup and put him as your first in line. So if Wedge or Biggs dies, he can come in and replace Biggs. That way you always have a tank kind of in rotation to protect your team. And what that will do is free up one more slot in your first five for one of the TIE fighters. Now, the TIE fighter that's probably going to be the most annoying on RNG for your opponents is going to be the Imperial TIE fighter just because he's going to dodge a lot and give Admiral Akbar an already fast ship faster turn meter. But um, on offense, it just seems like he always dies way fast, even though um, on defense, you can't ever seem to hit him. So you might want to do uh, the first order TIE fighter, but either one of them, they have a really good chance on their basics of applying down target lock. And then um, the Imperial TIE fighter can actually put buff immunity over a ship. Now that's cool because if you come in, target lock them around one, and then the next turn comes around and the tank's still alive, you can hit that buff immunity. And um, yeah, so if they have target lock after the first turn, you can then hit them with this and it'll give them that buff immunity for two turns. And if you're hitting their tank, the moment your turn's over, their taunt will fall off, the buff immunity stays on, and they now can't rebuff. And so it just, it, it drops their tank useless for a couple of rounds, which allows you to pick off whoever you want to pick off. This is one of the few, if, if only... I think it's the only one. There may be one other ship that applies buff immunity, and that's pretty cool. So this is definitely a ship I would recommend investing in. As far as overall other ships, you know, your top eight continue to develop all eight. They're all phenomenal ships. Um, the next row down, I really wouldn't worry about any of these ships. Um, you might, maybe want to do the Umbaran Starfighter, um, but I highly doubt it, um, really because you have Ahsoka and she's so high, I wouldn't worry about it. And it looks like you've been pretty hyper-focused in this, and um, and I would just continue to recommend, like I said, the top eight, th th those would literally be the eight I would use. You have a Dispeller, you have a couple tanks, you have a couple of target lock, and some offense, and some uh, support characters. So it looks great. All, overall, your ships look awesome. So I hope that these, um, I hope BMAC, that the, the suggestions I make um, really sink in. I hope you break the top 50. Please let me know in the comments down below um, what you liked best about this suggestion. What did you guys who are listening learn from this particular roster review? As always, keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.